to a set. Um, now, um, yes, so um, I know some of you guys like to join us and kind of do the set with us. Some of you like to kind of watch it a little bit later and do the set, you know, because you can obviously watch these again. And some of you also just interested to see what the sets are, are going on. Um, fantastic. And yeah, fantastic. So um, uh, Tezneem, welcome. Fantastic guys. And Grayson. Um, Yes, you're going to do all the things. Fantastic. And you love doing the set, says William. That is brilliant. Well, as I said, welcome. We've just welcomed Auli too. Um, and uh, let's get going with this set because uh, obviously, as I said, there's a lot to go. And we're also going to be going a little bit deeper into the science today so you really understand what's going on. Now, I know lots of you guys like that. So please feel free to ask your questions. Just pop them into the chat. And, uh, and now, if you could try and keep them slightly related to electricity or electromagnetism or motors, that's great. But to be fair, Auli and I love answering any of the questions that you guys have. Hey, Auli. Yeah. So this is Auli, as I, as I said. And uh, yeah. OK, buddy. Right. You're going to come back for some of these experiments. OK, fantastic. All right. Let's get going. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just go to my um, tabletop here so we can see. Now, this is the set. So we'll just open this up and we're going to get everything out. Oop, there we go. Knock the camera. Auli's looking at me like, why do you knock the camera, Sparky Mark? All right. So this is everything that's inside the set. Now, I think it's often a good idea to get all of it out. Now, what you'll get is you'll have three of these instruction books and each one will have a number at the top and it will have the corresponding bag as well, which is also numbered, which is really good. So those guys in the Mel Science team who design these, uh, these experiments, I have to say they not only have lots of fun doing them, I think they are very organized as well, which makes my life much, much easier. And all about those. Now, this is the number two set and also the number three here. Here we go. Gosh, the number three. Now, I'm just going to get everything out and lay it out on the desk in front of, in front of me. So now I think you guys hopefully will be doing this, the same thing. Get everything out so it's ready to go. And I'm glad you love doing the sets. Fantastic, William. Brilliant. OK, so also there's a number of little items here which I'm going to just keep in the box because I can sort of see them nice and clearly. All right. OK, so the first one we're going to be doing, and as I said, we're going to go into the science a little bit more as well whilst we do this, is the electromagnet. And that is number one. OK, so before we get going, before we uh, before we understand what, uh, you know, what what an electromagnet is, we have to understand what magnetism is. Now, I don't know if you've ever played with magnets before. I'm pretty sure you would have done. Sometimes you can get them to, to go on the refrigerator. Um, sometimes you'll see them to st stick things to cars so you can get bumper stickers that stick by magnetism. Um, also, magnetism exists in lots and lots of areas of our lives. Um, now, can you anyone think of some uses of magnetism? Please pop them into the chat for me. Um, you can also have a, a parent or a, or a responsible adult type if you don't fancy it. You could say, please, could you type for me, which is absolutely fine. But actually, I, I love it for you guys do too. So let's have a think. What are some uses of magnetism in everyday life? Where where do we use magnetism? OK, where can we use magnetism? Now, I'll go through some of those in a minute, but I'll let you type that whilst we're doing this. OK, now, um, magnets. Uh, an electric car. Fantastic, says Grayson. Yeah, really, really good. Brilliant. Now, another place that they we use magnets sometimes. Um, I'm good to find things, says Cashin. Well done. A safer way to move dangerous metals. Look at that. What a fantastic answer. Well done, Connor. Fantastic. Anyone else? Picking up nails, says Frozen North. Yes, totally right. Really, really good. Great suggestions. These are really good. Well done, guys. OK, perfect. OK, so as I said, there are lots of uses of magnetism. We'll be going into more of them as we go along. But now uh, there are some, for example, a friend of mine has a door. Um, he lives in a in a, some, an apartment building where you sort of, you know, dial his number in. And then when he, he he'll pick up the phone and say, yes, yes, come up. And he presses a buzzer. And what it actually does is it, it has an electromagnet which keeps the door closed. But as soon as he presses the buzzer, it opens essentially um, opens the door, which actually cuts off the electromagnet, essentially, so you can actually open the door, which is very, very cool. Um, and uh, William, you say you use them for keeping pictures on the refrigerator. Fantastic. So we see magnetism used in many, many areas of our lives. But there are 
things called permanent magnets. Now, permanent magnets are always magnetic, so you can use them. Um, in fact, we're going to be looking at those just a bit. But imagine we have a permanent magnet. We can use it to pick up things. The only problem is we can't turn it off. It's always on. Now, magnetism essentially is a type of force, OK? And magnetic force is a non-contact force. So forces around us, like gravity or, say, for example, here's, here's Owly. My real owl friend, you're definitely a real owl, definitely, definitely a real owl. Again, there we go. Now, if, for example, you don't mind if I do this, yeah. If, for example, I push Owly that way, he moves, or I could pull Owly that way, you're okay, fantastic. Now, those are pushes and pulls. So the forces are all around us, and some of them are pushes, some of them are pull. Now, some of them are contact forces. For example, if I push Owly, I'm in contact with him. Some of them are non-contact forces. For example, gravity, okay? So if I took, say, um, here we go, I've got a, uh, I've got this little bottle for one of the science, Mel science, Mel chemistry experiments. Here we go, uh, in fact, it's Mel physics. And if I let it go, it drops. The reason it drops is because of gravity, which is a type of force. Now, another type of force is magnetism. Magnetism is created by magnetic materials that form magnets. Now, the thing is, with magnets, as we said in many, many... Yeah, Grayson said a magnetic lock. Fantastic. Or keeping these on the refrigerator. Very often, these are... Most of the, most of the use cases that we know sort of day-to-day -day are permanent magnets, where you just pick things up. But there is a very, very cool type of magnet that we can actually turn on and turn off, which is very useful. So, for example, the magnetic lock, uh, just as Jason said, or, you know, my friend's building. Um, also, sometimes in car or, or vehicle scrapyards, you know, they, they, these, these huge scrapyards where they have old cars and old buses and things like that and stuff that are just rotting, you can, they, they have these enormous electromagnet kind of arms that pick them up and you can move these items around so long as they are magnetic. Now, there are three magnetic materials. Now, um, behind me here is something called the periodic table. And these are all the different types of atoms that exist in the universe. There are many, many different types of atoms. Don't worry, we're going to get building in just a second. But I want to make sure you understand this. Now, there are three atoms, essentially three types of element that are magnetic. OK, and I'm going to be doing a little poll on these in just a second. So I'm just giving you a heads up. OK, they are iron, cobalt and nickel. OK, three types of metal that are magnetic. Now, um, there is a steel is also magnetic. OK, it's a type of metal as well. Steel is very often used in cars and, and things like that stuff, hence why we can pick them up. Um, but that's the reason it's magnetic, because it's mostly iron. So it's iron, nickel and cobalt. OK, I promise I'll be doing a little poll in just a second. All right. Fantastic. So let's get going. Now, we are going to make a magnet, essentially, that we can turn on and turn off again. Electromagnets are magnets that you can turn on and off, says Grayson. Fantastic. Look at that. Brilliant. Um, OK, brilliant. So let's get one out. Now, hopefully, you guys, I've given you a little bit of time just to get started and get everything out. Hopefully, everything should be out. Now, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be building the electromagnet first. So let me make sure I go to my uh, tabletop so you can see. And we're on, we're on the first one here. OK, so this is it. Now, what we're going to do is uh, well, let's see how a magnet interacts with metal objects, paper clips and wire and a compass and things. So what I've got here is I've got this little jar here and it says magnets on it. So we've actually got some magnets within here. So if I take this out here, I've got, here we go, I've actually got a magnet here, this round one. OK, so what I'm going to do now. Please be careful with these magnets, by the way. Now, this is just a very quick sort of, um, please keep them away from the computer and keep them away from your um, your cell phones, please, your mobile phones, your, your uh, portable telephones. Um, now, it, you should be OK, but as I said, they because um, they're, they're not super, super strong, but do just generally keep them away from the computer, simply because the computer actually stores information magnetically um, using magnets, which is very cool. But we need to be careful. OK, now, obviously, different computers will interact in different ways. But we'll just keep it slightly away. So that's my that's my main safety uh, kind of note to you guys. All right. Fantastic. So let's have a look at this here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my magnet here. Now, um, it was sort of separated by this little piece of plastic here. And um, those are my two magnets. So I'm going to pop the other one into there and I'm just going to do this up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this magnet out and let's see how it interacts with things. OK, so inside pack one, OK, I should have some paper clips. OK, and I should also have some wire as well. But let's have a look at there we go. So hopefully you guys have already started this and you can see what happens to the magnet and when it interacts with the paper clips. So let's have a look at this. I've got these two paper clips here and I'm just bringing the magnet close to them. And oh, look at that. It jumped. Fantastic. Now, they the reason is that the magnet OK, is magnetic. But these here, these paper clips are magnetic material because they'll either be made of iron, nickel or cobalt. Um, perfect. Well done. So Grayson's asking if you try to make a motor like this, uh, one with ordinary magnet it will not work. Not all magnets do this. Yes, absolutely right, guys. Now I'm not sure why it's gone slightly out of focus. There we go. Let me just make sure there we go. Um, I will switch to this one here. Right now. Um, OK, so as we said, we've got our little magnet here. And in fact, what's actually quite cool here is to do if I've got this, if I actually got my magnet here, I can actually then stick these. Oh, that's very cool. These paper clips and they're actually quite hard to, to get apart. It's quite a strong magnet. OK, so there we go. Now, that's that's one interaction. Now, what we can actually do here is we've also got another a number of other items within within this here. And um, for example, I've got this bolt as well. Here we go. And see, it is magnetic. So have a go and see what it will stick to. Um, as I said, please do do try and keep it away from the computer be a good idea. You're probably OK. But as I said, I just you know want to make sure that uh, we keep those things safe. So that's how you interact with those. OK, now then the other thing also that we have inside the set and which is, by the way, I encourage you to do these things for yourself is even after the session has finished um, to just have a go with these magnets and have a look. Now, we also here have a little plotting compass, OK, which tells us where north is. Um, and the, there we go. So I'm going to quickly just hold this here. And Auli, where do you think, where is north? So Auli's going to help me. Where, where is north? Yeah, it's that way. OK, so fantastic. So, so that's north. Now, I know that those of you guys who are in the United States um, will actually be to the west of me. So you're over there. Hey, guys, over there, even though you're over there. Ali thinks I'm being very confusing. Sorry, guys. Yes, but anyway, there we go. So north is roughly that direction, isn't it? That's fantastic. Thanks, buddy. OK, so but if I bring the magnet close to it, what ends up happening is north actually ends up moving. So let me show you this here. OK, so this is my plotting compass. Now you can see this little arrow here now is spinning because I brought the magnet close to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it to there we go. It's still spinning round. There we go. So now it's sort of coming to a coming to a stop and it's going to point in that direction there roughly. OK, you can sort of see where it is. But watch this. If I bring the magnet close to it, watch this. I end up now. How's that working for you guys at home? It's quite fun. I have to say it's quite a fun little bit of an experiment, but I'll let you do that for yourselves. Now, what we're going to do is make an electromagnet. Now, what it was discovered. So a wonderful, wonderful discovery that if you take OK, a coil of wire. In fact, if you just take a normal wire, any normal wire, OK, and you allow electricity to flow along that. Now, essentially, electricity is just a flow of something called electrons. OK, now every atom. So the world around us is made of atoms. They are tiny little things that you can't even see under a microscope. And atoms are mostly empty space. OK, but they combine together to make things like you, me and the world around us. But atoms around the outside of them have these little clouds of things called electrons. And if these electrons move, this is electricity. Now, please, there's a lot of concepts that I've gone through there and I don't need you to be an expert in all of those. I just need you to roughly understand that essentially, OK, that if you have electricity flowing through a wire, what it is is these little things called electrons are actually moving. And that will only happen in something called a conductor, so metals. 
Okay, there is actually uh, um, in, in mostly, mostly just metals except for uh, um, graphite, but we're not going to go into too much of that right now. But the main thing to understand here is electricity is just the flow of electrons. But what we found is that if you have electricity flowing through a wire, even a very small amount, a magnetic field is created around that wire. Now, if we turn off the electricity, the magnetism stops. So this is fantastic. Brilliant. And uh, Grayson said, fun fact, atoms never touch each other. Yes, exactly right. Well done. They don't. So even my hands, are, it seems like they're touching, but the atoms themselves aren't. Very interesting. OK, fantastic. So now hopefully you guys have this all out. Now, the other thing we're going to need is some batteries. OK, so now I've got I've got some AA batteries, double A batteries. OK, and we're going to need to get those out for the set. And within the set also, you will find there is a little battery pack that actually holds your batteries for you. So let me go to this. What I'm going to do is pop my two batteries into my battery pack, my battery holder. OK, and I've got the red wire and the black wire. Now, I can see in the chat that you guys are all ready to go. So let's get going. So I've got my battery pack here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red wire. OK, and we're going to attach it to this little push button switch here. It doesn't matter which side you turn you plug it onto because they're both red. OK, and I'm going to take my red crocodile clip. Now, what you do with the red crocodile clip is you just press on it and it should open up. Now, it's a little bit fiddly, but you can see that the little teeth open up. It looks like a bit like a crocodile. And what we do is we open it up and we place that onto one of the cables on the push button here. OK, now what we do is from that push button, what we're going to do is we are going to take the black wire with the crocodile clips and we attach that to the other end of the push button switch here. OK, so there we go. Now let me make sure that I'm just double checking my audio levels seem to be OK. Fantastic. Good. So you guys can hopefully hear me OK. All right. Brilliant. So I've got the battery pack and I'm connecting the red wire onto the push button. And then from the push button, I'm then connecting this black wire here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this long wire here, this long black wire that was in set one. OK, I'm just going to unravel it. A little bit. Now, what I'm going to do here is let me just unravel it for you. Um, so how are you guys getting on? Please let me know in the chat. Are you able? Are you are you are you with me? So I know I had a couple of people saying, please wait up a minute. So I think everyone seems to be OK. Good. Now, I've got the long wire here. You can sort of see I've got this long wire here and I'm going to connect one of those. Here we go. One end to the black crocodile clip that is attached to the push button. And I'm going to attach the other end to the black crocodile clip that is attached to the battery pack. Now, we've created a circuit. I can see Kashin is saying, you're good, fantastic, well done. Now, we have created a circuit. Now, it's quite hard to see because I've got everything here. But essentially, what's going on here is this. The, the electricity will come from the battery. OK, so essentially what happens is these battery cells will generate a, um, a voltage, which will then allow current to flow. But as I say, you don't need to be an expert on this. But the main thing to understand is that the, this will force electrons to start moving along this wire here. And that is what electricity is. Now, what's going to happen is the, it, the electricity is going to flow round here through the button, although the button isn't actually pressed right now, so it, it, it won't flow, but it will once I press it and then flow round, round this wire and I've created a circuit. OK, now electricity will only fly, so fly, will only flow if there is a full circuit. Now I can see a couple of people saying, please wait. No problem. Don't worry. Don't worry. And as I say, you have plenty of time to do this yourself um, after. But we take the battery pack and we connect the red crocodile clip, the red wire to the push button, the push button and the other end of the push button. We connect to the black wire with the crocodile clips on the end and we connect both of these black crocodile clips to the wire here, this long wire. You're good. Fantastic. Well done, Tisha. Perfect. Good. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to bring my plotting compass close. OK, so now here we go. I'm going to make sure that you can see all of this. In fact, what I need to do is just make a little bit of space for everything here. 
Okay, so I've got my, um, there we go, I've got my plotting compass and it's just gently settling there, okay, and it's pointing sort of roughly that way as north, okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is if I press this button, okay, if I press this button, now what I'm going to do actually is just bring the camera a little bit closer there so you can kind of see a little bit better. Okay, now it's settled down and it's telling me that north is roughly that direction. If I press this button here, okay, what we're going to see is we should maybe see some change to this because the wire will actually make a magnetic field around it. So remember I told you that when electron, when electricity flows through a wire, it generates a magnetic field around it. Well, if I press this, in fact, the, the head is moving ever so slightly. It does move ever so slightly as soon as I press this button. But I have to say, it's not very impressive. Owly's looking at me going, that's pretty terrible, actually, Sparky Mark. I don't think that's, that's very interesting. Right, now, how can we make it more interesting? So if I do press it, it does actually move. I can see it move ever so slightly when I press this button here. How can we make it move more? So what I do is I disconnect my black wire, my long, long wire, and we are going to wrap it around. Okay, now what I've got here is um, I've actually got a bolt here, a metal bolt. Now this bolt is actually, it's made of steel, but essentially it, is, it contains mostly iron, now which is a magnetic material. Now I'm just gonna very, very quickly do a poll for you guys. Do you remember what magnetic materials were? Okay, what, which ones, which three of these are magnetic materials? So which of these would work? Now, by the way, whilst I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my cable around my, I'm going to wrap it around this bolt here. Okay, and I'm just going to gently wrap it round and round and round. You can do the same thing. Now I can see that uh, about half of you so far have answered the poll. Well done. Now, by the way, I don't need you to get the right answer. It's okay. Don't need you to get the right answer. I just having some participation, as I say, we can't see you, Ali and I, but you can see us. So it's really nice to have the participation. Just check that you're awake. Almost all of you guys have answered. Wow, 80% of you now. Is anyone left? And now remember, I can't see your answers. So I don't know who got what. So don't worry about getting the wrong answer. But it's just more just to see, as I say, are you awake? Are you there? You know, how are you getting on? Okay. So let's have a look. And I think that's pretty much everyone has answered now. So let's have a look at this and I will share the results. That's right, 100% of you guys who answered, answered the correct answer. Iron, cobalt and nickel, okay? Those are magnetic materials. Now, of course, um, as I discussed, steel contains iron. So now this steel bolt here, what I'm doing here is I'm just wrapping my wire around it gently like this. So I'm trying to make what we call a coil. Now, what happens with coils is this. Well done, Vice Fair, and thank you very much for everyone participating. So, as I said, can you, can you see that I'm sort of gently wrapping it round? Now, eventually, this, uh, this bolt here will eventually get totally wrapped in the thing. William's already finished it. Wow, fantastic. Good, good. Now, I'm just going to do it pretty quickly, but I want to make sure. Obviously, if you don't quite finish, don't worry. You don't have to wrap the whole thing. Now, I'm leaving like a little wire at one end, and I will also leave a wire at the other end. So, here we go. I'm just wrapping this round here. Now the fast way to do it is just wrap it like this loosely and then what you can do is you can push those together like this. You see that? Wrap them and then what we're doing here is just wrapping around and around and around and around. Here we go. I'm still wrapping. There we go. Owly's asking if I'm wrapping like rap music. No, I'm not. It's just, it's just wiring. Here we go. I'm gonna keep wrapping around like this. Here we go. Now, what's happened here is the bolt starting to run out of space. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna just make my wire at the end a little bit longer here. So I'm gonna make that about a finger, adult's finger's length, but that's okay. There we go. And I'm gonna wrap round, 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 like this, okay? Now, you don't have to get all of it on there, don't worry. But essentially what I've got here is I've got my coil. Now what I'm going to do is connect this to the two black crocodile clips, okay? Right, now, now this is my 
plotting compass. Hopefully you can see that it's sort of pointing that way. OK, it's sort of pointing. Um, what I'll do here is um, I'm going to sit Auli right in front of it. Auli wants to sit right in front of it, so that's fine. OK, there we go, Auli. I can see there's, I think there's some magnets. There we go. All right, Auli's sitting right in front of it. You're going to have a look, aren't you, Auli? There we go. He's sitting right in front of that. So what I'm going to then do is I'm going to press the button on this and we're going to have a look at what happens when I press the button on this. OK, so there we go. I press it and look at this. Can you see? It's now deflected. Now, if I. Oh, there we go. And look at this. Every time I press the button, it dramatically affects. Now, look at this. You see, I can actually affect. This has essentially become a magnet. Now, look, it's just spinning around now. Now, it wasn't magnetic before. And when I let go of this, it stops being a magnet. It actually turns the magnet off, which is very cool. So just a quick reminder, it is the electricity flowing around the wire that creates a magnetic field. So if we can't, we don't have a magnet, we can make one using just a coil of wire. But why does the coil help? Why does it make it stronger? Well, the reason for this is when you just have a wire, it makes a very small magnetic field around it. But if you coil that wire up, every time you coil it, you end up sort of adding an, it's almost as if you've added an extra wire to that area. So if you then coil it, maybe say 50 times, it is now 50 times the equivalent of just one wire, which is fantastic. And I can see a couple of people saying, including William, saying this is amazing. Yes, I love this one. Ali, you love this one, don't you, buddy? Yeah, he really, really loves this experiment. So I, and we'll do a bit more later, I promise, Ali. Because I do, I do encourage you guys after the session to just mess around with these because obviously we have to build them quite quickly. Um, good. So essentially what's going on here is we've actually created an electromagnet. And in fact, these electromagnets, so the, all the uses that, uh, that use electromagnets, for example, magnetic door opening or magnetic locks on buildings or those devices that pick up really heavy uh, cars and buses and, and things like that stuff in those wrecking yards. Um, essentially, yep, that they, they are all they are is just a coil of wire. OK, but why did we put it around something that was iron? OK, so I mean, this is steel, but it's mostly made of iron. Now, why did we do that? Now, the other thing that's really, really clever about electromagnets is we can make them stronger. OK, there's three ways of making them stronger. The first is we can use more electricity because, of course, more electricity means they're moving faster. And essentially what's happening here is that the, you get a greater magnetic field. Fine. The other way is we can coil it up. We can make it coil up many more times. But there's a third way. We can also use what we call an iron core. Now, what actually happens is this. this is pretty amazing. What actually causes magnetism? OK, it is now the, the I, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but essentially we can think of magnetism being as essentially the the. Um, I think probably the, the without going as I say too far, essentially it's to do with the arrangement of the way that the atoms behave now in a normal magnetic material, OK, what will actually happen is the arrangement will be random. OK, these the atoms are all just randomly arranged. But what happens is the moment we pass a magnetic field through it, the moment we bring it close to a magnet, all of these atoms then line up. OK, these poles essentially line up. But what then happens is it actually turns, the, which is actually amazing, it actually turns this iron core into a magnet. Now, as I say, um, I'm not going to go too far, too deep into the, uh, the, the, so we don't go too far into the science, but the core thing, because obviously you can look that up for yourself, but the main thing here to understand is that when you put the coil of wire around a, an iron core, what then happens is the iron core itself actually becomes magnetized, which means that suddenly it becomes much, much stronger. OK, fantastic. Now, you put one of your magnets on the compass, the needle, the needle will follow the magnet. Yes, Grayson, fantastic. Does a larger wire make a bigger magnetic field? Now, um, essentially, the, yeah, the, the, it's, it's not so much the size of the wire. Now, the, the larger wires will actually allow more electricity to flow through them. So in theory, if you're trying to create a very, very large magnetic field, yes, you probably use thicker wires because they'll have less resistance. But essentially, William's saying you're the best teacher ever. Thank you. I don't know about, let's, let's see. Ali's looking at me going, 
I'm not sure, you know, but it, it's, I think I think that what I'm trying to do here is take quite a concept, I, uh, quite a hard concept or quite a complex concept that we are still, the humans have spent a lot of time trying to understand, but essentially to condense it into the most easy format for you guys to understand. And of course, then I do encourage you like proper scientists. It doesn't mean you have to go and do it as a job, but real investigators of the world. OK, like all the great scientists. Go and research more yourselves. Go and have a look, you know, and, and feel free to message us at Mel Science. You know, the, message that, you know I, I, the team love answering questions as well and things like that. So and please keep asking questions. Right. Good. OK, so we've made an electromagnet, which is pretty cool. And then what you can actually do here is, um, by the way, another way of visually demonstrating this, um, because um, I want to make sure that uh, you guys can actually sort of um, see this is using the paper clips okay so let me just quickly do that now i will use the paper clips um, and i'm going to press this button here here we go uh tabletop and i'm going to press this button here now watch this if i bring this now watch this if i bring this close okay can you see the the, the paper clips don't really seem to care very much about this do they now i'm not pressing the button okay so watch this look I'm, they don't really seem to care but the moment i press the button watch this i'm holding the button down watch this oh Look at this. It's become magnetized. Now watch this. What happens when I let go of the button? <gasps> there we go. They drop off. OK, which is very, very cool. So we're able to turn this on and turn it off again. Great. Now I'm going to let you guys have a go for yourselves on that. Now I just want to quickly note that the Earth itself, OK, the Earth itself actually behaves like a really big magnet. And that's why the plotting compass that we have here will point to north, which is actually very, very cool. Uh, we're doing that in the entire time, says Zoe. My well done, guys. That is awesome. Totally investigated. Brilliant. OK. OK. Number two, let's get going, because obviously I want to keep this. I want to keep this moving now pretty fast. So we've gone through most of the concepts now. So I think you pretty much understand. Now, I just want to quickly um, ask you guys another question. Do you remember I said, what is electricity? OK, so what's it? They were little electrons, but what was happening to them? So I'm just going to do a little poll for you guys just to ask, what is electricity? So electricity is is it when you pull on an elastic band, elastic trickery? Or is it something that we don't know the answer to? Or is it when you eat too many baked beans? Owley's looking at me going, that was really childish, Sparky Mark. But anyway, hopefully you guys are there. And then the other one is, is electricity the flow of electrons through a conductor? OK. Well done. Fantastic. Now I can see Ebne. Hello, Ebne. Um, I can see you've put either. Please click on the polls there. But as I said, I can't see who uh, who uh, answers um, answers what. But it's just good to, to know you guys are participating and uh, that you, you know, part of this. OK, now while we do that, I'm going to get number two out. So I'm going to get everything out of the bag for number two. OK, because uh, we need to get started. I need to make sure this uh, this. We're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything out for set two. And let's get going. Perfect. Right. I can see that 100% of you guys correctly answered. This is everyone who answered. Well done, guys. Remember, I don't need you to get the right answer. This is all just part of the learning experience. Is the flow of electrons through a conductor. Exactly. Electricity is the flow of electrons. Now, when these electrons flow through a wire, I have to say, by the way, when electricity was first sort of discovered, it, it was like, OK, so, you know, it does this thing. OK, stop saying. There we go. Stop sharing. Um, it, it does this thing. But who cares? But it wasn't till a little bit later that we started to go, wait a second. Electricity is amazing. We can have electric candles. Now, I have to tell you that we used to light our houses using candles or gas burning things, which is not super safe. But I have to tell you, candles are expensive. And also, they very often make the ceiling black and not, not very good, not very good. But electric candles, i.e. light bulbs, much more efficient. Also, now we have the internet and you guys can see me because of electricity. It's amazing. Yes, electricity is amazing. But we're looking at some of the more interesting little parts of it that um, of electricity that actually the first humans who were sort of experimenting with electricity, you know, Tesla and Edison and um, 
uh, Westinghouse, lots of the people who, who got involved with test and messing around with and Voltaire and all the other people who kind of working with science. This is these are the experiments that they were looking at. These are really cool experiments. So you actually get to see, get a feel for what they were doing. And by the way, when they were doing these experiments, most of the time they were just doing them for interest. They were going, oh, it makes the magnet. But it's only later that they've discovered that actually we can do some cool things with this. But um, I'm hopefully helping you understand that there's some fun parts too. Okay, perfect. All right, let's go for this. So what I've got here is we're going to build this. Uh, essentially, what we're going to build is the electric generator, which is number two. So let me quickly just make sure you can see my tabletop. Perfect. So we've got the um, now there's this little. Um, OK, so what we're going to do here is the magnet and the wire will only interact when there's an electric current in the wire. OK, so what we're going to do here is I've actually got a coil of wire inside this red and you should have it too at home. What you do is you unravel. OK, unravel the wire. Now, there's a little yellow sticker on here. So I'm just going to try and get that off. There we go. Get the we're not going to unravel the whole wire. We're just going to unravel part of it. And so I'm going to just take this off here and this one off here. Now, it'll be quite hard to see in the camera, but hopefully you can. You've got your two wires that are leading out of this. Now, essentially, this here is a coil of wire. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mag my from my magnet. There we go. My little kind of magnets. I'm going to get the other magnet out, which is this one here. We can see it's magnetic because look at what it's doing to the, uh, the magnetic compass. There we go. There we go. Definitely. So I'm going to pop that there. Oh, there we go. And I will put away the other one there, basically. So I'm going to pop this. This one away. I'm going to keep this away from everything. OK, fantastic. So I've now got the very, very small magnet. Now, what we're going to do is this. OK, we're going to connect this coil of wire, this little yellow, sorry, red tube. And we're going to connect that to our battery pack. So let me disconnect my battery pack here from from the previous experiment. Here we go. Now, I'm going to have to move quite fast because I want to make sure that we've got enough time for this. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect what the red one to one of these little wires that's coming out of the red tube. OK, and I'm going to connect the black one to the other one there Let me move all this out of the way. OK, now what I'm going to do here is I've got now essentially what I've got here is this now I've connected these. OK, give me a second. Um, now, by the way, just really just really quickly, um, you can actually see that on the wire. I'm just going to quickly just do like this. What you need to do is you need to be careful. There's a sort of slightly copper color, slightly goldy kind of color, and there's a silver part on the end. You actually want to connect it onto the silver part just at the end there. OK, so now it's very hard to see. Um, why do you need to plug in the spool to do the experiment? Good question, Grace. I'll go into that in just a second. So thank you. Let me just this is definitely slipping a little bit. There we go. Now you just connect to the end and we're going to connect to the end here. OK, now we've connected the spool. So there's now electricity traveling through this this these here. OK, um, I'm actually leaving my battery off for just a second. And now what I'm going to do is we take the little plastic tube and we insert that into the middle of that and we take an elastic band. OK, and we're going to turn the elastic band around the top of the plastic. So I just want to make sure you can see this here. So I've got my little black so and I'm taking my elastic band here. So in fact, if I do it without just so you can kind of see this, this little plastic straw, black plastic straw, and we just turn this around. OK, you see this, I've actually taken the elastic band and I've turned it round and I'm actually going to turn it round three times. OK, so what it does is it then sticks onto there we go and it sort of wraps around the plastic straw. Now, what that will do is it will actually prevent it from coming through. OK, now um, Tezim says you don't have a plastic straw. Ah, OK, now you can use any normal. You should be with the set. Please, if any of the bits are missing, please do let Mel Science know. They're normally very, very good at making sure everything's in there. Just make sure. It, have you checked inside uh, number two, bag number two? Have a look inside the other bags just in case. Let us know. Um, 
And if you don't, then you can use another piece of just normal drinking straw as well. Okay, fantastic. Good. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, very often, these these um, the bits that they actually use are useful because you can actually replace them if you break them or anything like that in your home. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on the other side as well. So I just turn it round, okay, and just flip that round here. And I've got... I'm just going to turn it around three times as well. You might need a little bit of help from um, parents or a responsible adult just to. Now, what we do is we ro we sort of roll them down. Now, what's happening here is you've got the elastic round here and the elastic round here. And what that does is it just keeps it in place there. Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pop the magnet inside this device here. OK, I'm going to put the magnet inside the device and I'm going to put this little plug on the end here. And I'm also going to put the plug on the other end there. OK, now what's going to happen here is this. OK, so now what's going to happen is, um, in fact, give me one second. Now, you said that we I'll show you what, what happens is this. If we connect, here we go, if we. There we go. Now. OK. Um, essentially, what you can do is you can actually test this. This is what I was saying about connecting the uh, the power to it. If you just do this, if you just drop the magnet through the thing, it just drops out very, very easily. But if you connect the battery, okay, this is just a little side experiment. If you connect the battery, look at what happens to it when you drop the magnet through here. It actually takes a lot. There we go. It takes longer to drop through. But... Now we're going to disconnect the battery pack and I'll let you try that one for yourself. That's just a little side one. What I'm going to do here now, as I said, is I put the magnet inside here and I put the little two plugs on the end. So I think there we are, rather than being Ali saying I'm being confusing. No, all you need to do essentially is take your your little red tube and you place the drinking straw with the two elastic bands either side and then put the little plugs on the end. OK, and once you've done that, what we're going to do is connect that to the buzzer. Now, this little device here is the buzzer. And what we're going to do is I take one of my wires, I'm going to take my red wire here, and I'm going to connect this just to the end of the wire on my red device. There we go. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Sorry, there we go. And I'm going to make sure. There we go. And I'm going to connect that to the red terminal of the buzzer. And then what I do is I do the same thing with uh, the black wire here with the crocodile clip. We just connect it just to the end of this wire coming from our red coil. And we connect that. There we go. It's still connected to my push button switch. We connect that to the black connector on my buzzer. OK, so then what we do, OK, once we've done this, is we unravel everything, as I say, I just want to make sure I've got everything. And what I'm going to do now is this. I've got my buzzer here and I'm going to move this. OK, I'm actually going to take my my. OK, this is my coil of wire. The coil of wire here is just a coil of wire. Perfect. Um, Good question. I tell you what, I'll come. I'll come back to that question in just a second. Fantastic. Good. You also have a yeah. You also have an LED as well. Now, what I'm going to do, as I said, is I've got the coil of wire. I've kind of got the drinking straw. I've actually put the magnet into there. So make sure you drop the little magnet into the uh, into this. And what you then do is you move it backwards and forwards like this. Okay. You shake it vigorously. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this close to my microphone. And what actually happens is. Every time I shake this, so let me go to the, my main screen. Every time I shake this up and down, I don't know whether you can hear that. Obviously, there's the noise of this, but there is a little squeak that comes. And if you hold it, you can hear it. So William says you can hear it. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Now, you can also connect that and I'll do this very quickly because we haven't got a huge amount of time for the last one. But essentially what I'm going to do is connect that to this LED bulb here. OK, so we have a very, very small LED bulb um, here. And what we're going to do is connect this. So what you do 
is you connect the red wire to the long end of the LED, okay, long end of the LED, and you connect the black wire to the, um, to this, to the end that's curved, that's sort of moved over to, that's bent over. And what I'm going to do then is if I move this backwards and forwards, what you actually get is a very, very small amount of light that's given off. Now, it's very hard to see in here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to dim the lights a little bit. Um, Ali, you're not scared or anything? No, oh, and I don't know whether you can see this. It starts to actually light up. So in fact, what I'll do is I will completely black it out here. And what I'll do is you can actually see it lighting up as I vigorously, there we go, look at that. And if you get it, there we go. It's actually, wow, that's actually pretty strong. Fantastic, there we go. All right, so, um, there we go. I just make sure I've got my all my lights on again. Um, good. Yeah. And you can sort of see it lighting up a little bit in the light, but much better when you have it. So I'll let you guys have a go at that one. Now what we're going to do is building the electric motor. OK, now I have to say this one takes a little bit of time. So I want to make sure we get through it. But it and I can see that Zoe Meyer is saying this is so fun. Yeah, I love these experiments. I hope you are enjoying them too. Auli, how are you finding it? You love them. Yes, I know you love them because you love this session, don't you? Yes. All right. Cool. Fantastic. I'll keep going. Right. Let's get going. So we've got the um, we've got the last one. So this is set three. We're actually building an electric motor. So by the way, just really quickly, I just want to I just want to point out because I think it is kind of amazing that all we did here, by the way, sorry, all we did. Um, now, sorry, I think because I have to make sure I explain this. This is a coil of wire and we passed a magnet. There is a magnet inside there that I'm moving backwards and forwards. By the way, did it strike anyone that it's pretty amazing that it was actually making electricity? The little buzzer would buzzing. It's not making very much electricity, by the way. It's not as good as if you uh, connected the uh, the buzzer to the to the battery. You know, if I connect the buzzer to the battery here, then we you know, it's going to it's going to be nice and nice and loud, but essentially here, yeah, there's, you know, it's a pretty annoying noise there, but essentially, yeah, I mean, that's much better, but the, the, essentially what was going on here is the opposite. So do you remember I said that if you have um, a wire and you pass electricity through it, it will make a magnetic field. But what we found is if you take a magnetic field and you move a wire, within it, or you move a magnet near, near a wire, it actually makes the electrons flow along the wire. And in fact, that is one of the major ways that we actually generate electricity. So now, that's pretty cool. So that's the that's kind of the opposite, essentially. You can actually make electricity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the other way, and we're actually going to make an electric motor. Now my hope is that at least I help you build it, or at least get most of this done. Obviously, I'll let you guys do the rest of it yourself. But let's get going. So what we've got here with the electric motor, the most important part is you've got this here. We've got our base plate here. And what we've got is some ad adhesive pads. So I'm going to move pretty quickly um, and just to make sure that we get all of it done. But obviously, you can take your time. Now, you place the, the little pads okay, onto the corners of these boxes here. OK, so I'm just going to put the little pads. I do apologize. Obviously, I got so excited with the other experiments that, you know, we went on a bit. I know Ali's like, oh, make sure you get it done. So now really quickly, while I'm doing these pads, if you would like to receive a personalized postcard from Ali and I, OK, we, we send these little certificates for anyone who wants wants them. What you can do is we can set that what we'll do is actually Mail Science will actually send them for us, which is fantastic. But there's a little link that Res will send you in the chat. And you can just put your details in there. And what we'll do is we'll write it, Ali and I, and then Mel Science actually, thankfully, will send them off, which is very nice of them to do that for us. Lovely. Now, what we're going to do here is I've got this little, this little polystyrene pad. And what I'm going to do is for each of these little pads that I've placed, now, hopefully you can see I've placed them on the corners of these. All right, now I can see uh, you want them, you want them, says William, fantastic, cool, brilliant, says Lincoln, fantastic. Uh, is the AAs too much powers for the LED? Yes, Grayson, yes. Good question, sorry, that's why I didn't connect them. Yep, good question, thank you. Um, let's have a look here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off these. Now, this takes a little bit of time, so you, and you might need a little bit of help with that. And uh, what I'm, it might be just because I had a slight technical 
something at the beginning that we go over by a minute or two. Um, but I want to make sure that we get this done. So here we go. Now, obviously, you can rewatch this session as well. Now, um, there's a link there that Rez has put for if anyone who wants the personalized little postcard. Um, and it's lovely that Mel happy to send them out for us, aren't they? Isn't that owly? You like that. OK, so I'm just peeling off these these little top parts of the pads here. It takes a little bit of time. Now, what I've got here is this essentially this uh, this foam holder here will sit on the top here. OK, it sits just on that top part there. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the two little wooden pegs that come in the set and we're going to pop them into those little holes there. OK. Right. Now, what I'm also going to do is because I've taken those off, I'm going to take my battery pack. OK, I'll take my battery pack and I'm going to place that onto this bottom part here, which is pretty cool. So it kind of and she it means it's held in place there, which is fantastic. Now. I've also got a little round adhesive pad here. So there's a little round one. And essentially what we're going to do is you can actually take this out here of the um, you can take this out of its little protector. There's a little round adhesive pad and I'm going to stick that between the two of those. OK, so I just stick that between the two of these. Now I'm aware we haven't got very much time, so I'm going to be pretty quick. Um, I'm glad we've covered the science for this. Now, essentially what's going to happen here is by passing electricity through. Now, this was again, we discovered this human beings by passing electricity through passing electricity through a, a wire. It creates a magnetic field. And we've noticed that if you have two different magnets, they will interact with each other as well. So we found that by passing um, essentially passing electricity through a coil of wire, we can actually cause the coil of wire to move. Now, at first it was like, great, you know, you make the coil of wire move. Well, why is that useful? Uh, actually, it's really useful because it means we can make electric motors. And that's what we're doing here. So I've taken my little adhesive pad here. OK, and what I'm going to then do is I'm going to take the disc magnet. Here we go. So the disc magnet out of this set here. OK, so I'm just take my disc magnet here and I'm going to stick it to the bottom here. So now what I'm going to do, that's going to be my source of magnetism. OK, so hopefully you guys are OK with this. Now, also within the set, there are these two little holders here, these terminal stands. OK, and we will I think we might end up going a minute or two over. I do apologize for that. If anyone needs to go, obviously, you can rewatch the session. But I want to make sure that we get through this There's obviously a lot to do today. Um, and now the next step, which is step three, is this. OK, so what we have here is um, I've also got my little set here. Um, I there we go. Now, what I've got here is this little wooden holder here. Now, this is the I think probably the hardest part. What you do is you carefully coil the wire like this. You take one of the wires like this. So one of these wires that came in the set. Yes, that's right. So as I said, I think we'll probably go a couple of minutes over. Sorry about that, guys. I don't normally do that, but I wanted to make sure that for anyone who wants to know how to do this, they can. If anyone needs to go, that's OK. Thank you so much for joining us. But essentially, here we go. What we do here is the I've taken this little um, wooden piece. Fantastic. And what I'm going to do is you then fold it in half. OK, like this. So what you've done is I've got the wooden piece and you fold the wire so it literally is in half. OK, now what you do is you take the bottom one and you round it around. OK, here we go. Sorry. Give me a second. There we go. Now, the top one, I'm going to just do it. If this is looking for you guys, sorry, I'm doing this for you guys. The t what's going to happen is the bottom one comes around the back here. OK, so in fact, what I'm going to do is now what you do is you, you actually go this. All right. Here we go. Let me show it for you. So we've got the top one comes this way. The bottom one comes round the back like this and you just coil it round three times. OK, you just coil it round three times and the top one, you coil it round the other way, essentially. So it goes like this and it comes round the back. Now, essentially, it's still going in the same direction as the previous one. And we coil that round three times as well. OK, so we've coiled it round three times. Now, um, what's going to happen is the 
there we go, the bottom one's gonna be facing that way, and this one is gonna be facing this way. Okay, so essentially what we've got here is they've gone around both the same way. Fantastic, brilliant. Now, once you've done this, the problem is this wire has a bit of a protector on it. So we actually take this little box here, and this is the bit that I think is probably the hardest. What you need to do, okay, is you need to carefully clean one side of this. Here we go, and we're nearly done. You just take this little rubber and you rub your wire carefully like this. We're just going to gently rub the wire. Here we go. And you just rub one side of the wire. And what we're actually doing is removing the protective layer on just one side. Here we go. And this is, once this bit's done, there we go. So I've actually removed, can you see it's gone much lighter? And the same thing happens on the other side as well. Okay, so I'm going to clean that. Just do this, just rub the end. There we go. I'm moving the entire death. There we go. Owlie's rolling around. Now we're basically done, guys. Let me just show you what the next part is this. Now what we're going to do is this we we place our little our little motor essentially into here we go oh in fact there's one other little bit to do sorry is can you see these little um these little these little things here essentially what they are is those are going to hold them in place so what we do is you run the wire like this okay and you put this little plastic cap onto the wood there Okay, so just onto the wood like this. Okay, and the same thing we do on the other side. So you run it through the wire here and we just place it onto the wood. So obviously I'll let you follow the instructions, but you should be, okay. Now essentially what we've got is our motor part and I'm gonna just place this onto our device here. Okay, so let me just quickly do this. Now you might need to be careful to, be careful to, to clean enough off. There we go. And what I'm going to do here is so that it just sits like this, okay? Now, what I'm going to then do is connect the battery pack to the to each of these, okay? Now, in fact, actually, sorry, I'm going to do the, the black one onto that one and the red one onto this one. And then what you can actually do is, here we go, is you can actually give it just a little bit of a spin what you'll find is, now I haven't rubbed enough of this off here. There we go, there we go, just on one side. And all I have to do is place that on there and what will actually happen is it will start to spin. But as I say, much, there we go. Oh, it's actually trying to spin and I'm, there we go, ah. But now what I'm gonna do is because we have run out of time, I'm very sorry about this guys, obviously we've gone a few minutes over. Now there is a, um, you can re-watch the session obviously if you need to uh, see any of the bits. The key parts here is, oh, and it is starting, oh, there we go, it is trying to move. Now the thing is, it takes a little bit of time to get this. Now the problem, one of the problems of doing this live is that uh, obviously you know it is live. Um, one of the great things about doing live, you can ask your questions. You guys have been fantastic with your questions and everything like that today. Now, as I said, please have a go for this yourself. Now, the, as I said, the main goal for me was just to make sure that you understood the science behind this. Okay, remember that when you have a wire and you pass electricity through it, it makes a magnetic field. If you then part, move a wire near a magnetic field, it actually makes electricity. And if you have two magnets, okay, a magnet here with a coil of wire that has electricity flowing through it, um, and I haven't cleaned enough off, there we go, that's it, that's, that's perfect. Um, it actually, oh, there we go, it does actually, it is trying to spin, but I just need to make sure that this is bent in the right way. Then what happens is, um, Okay, now please don't let this run. So Lincoln's asked, I notice the wires on mine get really hot. Why is this? Yes, now when electricity travels through the wire, essentially some of that electricity, some of that energy is converted to heat energy. So please be careful with this. Don't let the motor run for more than about two minutes or so, because what can happen is the batteries and also this, uh, the circuit can actually end up getting very, very hot. Oh, mine's actually started to spin. There we go, ah, there we go, there we go. But ah, all right. now. 
Um, there was a question a little bit earlier, which I wanted to make sure that I did at least have a look at, was um, on experiment number one, you wrap the wire around the bolt. What happens if you didn't wrap it around? If you still wrapped it around, what would happen is you'd still get some magnetism, but not as much. Now I have to say, I love these experiments. And thank you so much for Lincoln's awesome questions and everyone's awesome questions. What do you think about this session, Ali? Best session ever, fantastic. Good. I know we ran a few minutes over, but thank you so much for being patient on those. Now, I, as I said, I wanted to just show you how to construct this. Now, the key here, guys, is with your motor is just make sure that you do actually rub off one side of the um, of the wire. OK, and if it's not working, just check that you haven't rubbed it off hard enough. OK, so I'm glad I could show you at least how to do it, even if we don't have a chance to really, really experiment. It. And then obviously try using a few more batteries. And in fact, what happens is more electricity will actually allow it to move a little bit faster, but be safe um, with dealing with electricity. I'm glad it was so cool. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Lincoln, Cashin, Christine, Connor, Frozen North, Grayson, Teason, William, Zoe, Maya, everyone else. Thank you so much. And also thank you so much for Rez as well. I know we've gone a little bit over, but you are wonderful, you guys. Right, great. Thank you so much. And we will see you again very soon, won't we, Ali? Yes, we will for next fun experiments with Mel Science. Take care and see you again soon. Bye-bye.